at Bates Nursery and Garden Center, and you're here with our Bates Botanical Boot Camp. And today we are talking common houseplant pests. Uh, this is has become a very big topic for a lot of you because indoor plants have become so popular, um, and bugs unfortunately go along with plants. Um, so. First off, let's talk about kind of where bugs come from and, you know, how you can get them inside your home. Um, one of the biggest uh, reasons why we have bugs inside our home is because we move a lot of our houseplants outside during the growing season. Uh, this is a good practice. I use this practice a lot because I love for uh, plants to be outside and to get the natural sunlight and I can get my indoor plants to um, uh, grow a little bit faster and get a little bit bigger. Uh, one issue with that is that there's a lot more bugs outside than there are inside. So um, when they're outside, there's a lot more, um, you know, available bugs to get on your plants. So they'll kind of sit there. You don't notice them all that much because your plants are actively growing and they kind of outgrow the pest issues if you have them. Um, some pests are much more easy to spot and you'll see populations growing and get bigger and you can handle it while they're outside. But a lot of bugs uh, kind of hide and you don't always see them. So whenever the growing season ends and you we start to get cold at night, then you have to bring your houseplants back inside. And that's generally when you're going to keep those populations growing because it's warm inside our homes and they can actively reproduce inside your homes and have multiple generations. So that's one you know way that you can get pests on your houseplants. The other most probably most common way for you to get bugs inside your house, unfortunately, is that you buy the bugs whenever you buy your plants. Now, here at Bates Nursery, we do our best to, you know, scout our plants. We call it scouting. All that means is, is you just look at the crops whenever they come in. We get tons of house plants in each week that we have trucks rolling in here. So every time we get them in, we tend to scout and we look to see if we have any pests, you know, to see if they've, we've brought pests inside the greenhouse. Um, here at Bates, what we do if we, cause we tend to have, you know, sometimes we keep plants for a long time. So the longer you keep them in a greenhouse, the more susceptible they are to, to getting pests. So what we do is what we have is a quarantine area is what we call it. So we have this for our indoor section, our perennial section, our trees and shrubs. We have areas at the, at the nursery that we, uh, you know, call like our hospital area, if you will. So if we find pests or pathogens on plants, we move them from our other plants and we try to get it dealt with. We don't do a lot of spraying here. We don't really like it. We try to be as organic as we can. Um, so when it comes to pests, we, uh, you know, we quarantine them and then we manually remove bugs if we can. We spray with organics if we have to, uh, to take care of the problem. And then we put them back on the lot if we can. House plants are no different. We have a quarantine area that we keep. Um, and that's where we have some of our bugs and when we try to, to treat them. So good news is, is that I've brought, well, here we have, a microscope uh, with a really cool little camera on it that can show you kind of the bugs in close up. So I went to our nursery hospital area today and I found a number of bugs. Uh, I, I did the five kind of most common ones that you tend to see. Um, and I've been and I've been from our hospital area to actually show you what the bugs look like. Um, Another, you know, at our nursery, we do this. Not all places are like that. I know everybody likes going to the Lowe's or the Home Depot to find those, you know, cheap $1 plants that are sitting on a rack out in the back. Um, you know, you do that and you buy those plants. A lot of times those plants have bugs on them and they don't, you know, at Lowe's and Home Depot, they're kind of trying to get them out. So they don't really take the time to uh, treat the issues. So a lot of times that's where the bugs come from as well. You bring those, you put them close to your other indoor plants or even outdoor plants and bugs tend to move around. They're very mobile. Um, so uh, do know that it's part of the trade. It's part of what we do, but know that plants, you know, bugs like plants. So um, that's a lot of times how we get them. Um, now I do want to go over with you uh, when to freak out and when to not. So, Having one bug on a plant isn't the end of the world. It's not like a you know crazy cause for concern. Bugs are very small. And what I want y'all to know is that not always, you know, chemical controls are not always necessary for bugs. Um, you know, you can squish bugs really easily. I know we don't always like to do that, but it's not that hard. Take a, you know, a little cotton swab or take a toothpick, whatever you want to do. Um, get some 
you know, a piece of uh, paper towel or something and just rub them down. If you can actually see the bug, they're very easy to kill. So a few bugs here and there is not the end of the world for your plant. Most plants can get through that without really seeing any damage. Um, another good practice is to look at your plants uh, often. And a lot of times, especially for me, I can tell if a plant has bugs before I even see the bug. You look for damage more so than you do the actual insect. So I will see a plant that I can tell has got some damage or looking a little funky. And then you get in there and you look at it and you can usually find the insect pest. Um, Another thing you need to know is that most bugs are not going to make it easy on you. They don't just present themselves right on top of the leaf. Almost all insect activity, for the most part, is going to be on the back sides of leaves. So looking at just the front of the leaves isn't doing much because the bugs usually are not on top. They're going to be on the back side. So you need to flip these leaves over whenever you're looking for insects and you usually see them on the back sides of the leaves. So, you know, once numbers get big enough and we what we would term an infestation that's whenever you know either organic or synthetic sprays are going to be needed to take care of the insect pest and it also depends on how big your plant is say you have a really tiny plant that's got a fair amount of insects they can do damage to a plant pretty quickly if you have a big house plant you've had for a while and say you've got one you know leaf that's got a whole bunch of insects on it sometimes pruning out insects is really the best method to do as well. You don't you don't have to get sprays out there. You can just generally clean up your plants and get rid of a lot of insects. So, you know, sprays aren't always necessary, but do know if the infestation levels get pretty high, then yeah, you're going to have to do something about it. So let's move to um, some of the common um, insects that we have. So let's see here. The first one I've got on the list is aphids. You're probably familiar with this term. Um, aphids, there's, gosh, I'm pretty sure there's over a thousand species of aphids. All different colors, um, generally the same shape. It's a tiny little insect. Um, I've got some on the screen right now. I don't know, Tyler, can they see this right now? On the on One moment. Okay, I've swapped over to our microscope. Here. All right, so I hope y'all can see this. What we have here is a little aphid colony. Um, and what I want you to notice is that this here is the adult. It's a big green one. Uh, I say big, it looks big. It's not very big at all. It's kind of hard to see. You can see it with the naked eye, but um, seeing it under the scope's a little bit better. So you've got the adult that's right here. Um, what you need to know about aphids is, is that the aphids are going to have color. A lot of times what you're going to see first is going to be the leftover shells. It's kind of hard to see because they're a little blurry, but these white shells right here, that's what the aphids cast. They When they go from the nymph stage to the adult stage, they shed their outer layer, kind of like a cicada, um, and they'll leave that behind. So a lot of people will come in and they'll show me insect damage or what they think is insect damage. It's actually leftover shells. You see those first because they just kind of lay about on the leaves. Um, you're not going to spray those because it's not going to do anything uh, because those are just leftovers. You need to find the actual insects, which are these green, uh, pretty leggy insects right in here. So uh, aphids are probably the easiest to control. They're very soft bodied insects. Um, their populations can grow pretty quickly in warm weather. So you do need to know, you know, if you see them, you kind of need to go ahead and get rid of them. An easy way to do it is literally just take your finger and just rub it over that whole leaf and just get rid of what you can kill that you know you're killing. You, you're actually killing that insect. You just rub it off and get them away. If you have high infestations, then sprays are easier. Uh, you can go organic sprays with aphids because like I said, they are a soft bodied insect. They die pretty easily, um, mainly from, I'm going to talk about some, some, you know, products that we sell here in a little bit, but the organics, uh, the soaps and the oils are what I'm going to talk about. They don't have an actual chemical in them. Uh, they just kill the bug by a smother process. Literally, they just smother the insect to where they can't breathe and that's how they die. So pretty easy to use that on the aphids. You're going to see aphids. If you're a gardener at all, you I'm sure have seen aphids. They love they love anything outside, inside, doesn't really matter. They, they're not picky. They will get on a lot of things. So um, watch them. But if the levels, you know, are not all that high, don't worry about sprays. Let's just rub them off. Um, so let's move on. I'm going to try to get another one up here for you. Let's talk about mealy bugs next let's see if i can get you a good picture of this all right oh all right 
Look at that guy. That's a good one. He's kind of moving just a little bit. They don't move much. Mealy bugs aren't really, really mobile. Um, they're a very prehistoric looking bug, if you ask me. They've uh, almost have a crustacean appearance. I'll try to get it flipped up just a little. See that better? There he is. That's looking good. Yeah. It won't stay there because the leaf is all tilt up sideways. But that's a good picture of what it looks like. Like I said, very prehistoric looking. Uh, it's got this white um, film kind of stuff over top of him that kind of coats his body. He's got a long tail. Um, see if you can pull it down a little bit and refocus. Let's see here. There. All right. That's good enough. All right. So mealybugs, uh, they're annoying. Not going to lie. And probably out of house plants, uh, they tend to be some of the most common. Um, they're pretty visible though. You can usually see uh, kind of cottony looking uh, substances on the leaves. So that's an easy way to kind of identify a mealybug. Sometimes it's hard to actually see the bug uh, because they do have that cotton kind of over top of them. Um, they're another soft bodied insect. So they're not terribly hard to kill. The biggest problem with mealybug is actually getting to the bug. They have a great way of hiding. They get in the crevices of like actually where I found this one was in the crevice. I've, I've detached all the leaves, but this one was down in the crevice of the leaves. So they get in these, you know, the crotch angles of these of these plants and they tend to be hard to effectively spray. That tends to be kind of the hardest thing about mealybug. Um, if you've grown house plants, especially things, uh, leafy things, philodendron, diffenbachia, uh, dracaena, any of those are, uh, it's common to have mealybug. So that's what you're looking for. It's going to be white, a crustacean looking insect. Um, spraying for these, sometimes, like I said, it's hard to get, when you use the organics, you have to make contact with the bug to actually kill the bug. So what I was saying earlier is that they tend to hide very well. So it's hard to get that chemical actually on that body and to cover it enough to actually kill it. So sometimes the use of synthetics, which is going to be an actual chemical, um, is easier to use with mealybugs. Now, once again, uh, always start off with rubbing them off. Anything you can do just to uh, get them off by your hands are, is, is the way to go. But like I said, if infestations get a little high, then we're going to have to spray. I would recommend using a synthetic rather than an organic, and I think you'll have better success with that. So there we go, mealybug. All right, that's on an Aurelia, by the way. Okay, what do I have next? Okay, I've got a little euphorbia here, a little leaf, and I'm going to show you eggs. This, These are white fly eggs. Now, I was only able to find the eggs because white flies are very mobile, hence the name white fly. It is a very small winged insect that's white that flies around. Uh, whenever you hit the leaves, they usually poof. If, if you have a good amount of numbers, uh, you can kind of knock the leaves around and the white flies will tend to disperse. They'll fly up for a second and then they'll find their way back to that plant. Uh, so you can actually see white fly pretty easily. Um, but a good way to control it is to control the egg stage. So these little yellowish white um, eggs that we see on this leaf right here, if y'all can, hopefully y'all can see that pretty good. Um, they don't look like much. They're just little round dots and they are visible to the naked eye, uh, but they just look a little better under the scope. Um, getting those controlled is good practice <clears throat> before they actually hatch. Uh, white flies can be kind of a nuisance. They're not like a killer really of plants. Uh, they don't even really, it takes a lot, a huge numbers really to cause uh, a plant to go downhill. And it honestly is much more of a greenhouse pest than it generally is at your home uh, because you do see them so much that you you know where they're at and you know how to control them. Uh, another soft-bodied insect, easy to kill by soaps or oils if you make good contact with them. You can spray these eggs with a soap or, or an oil. Actually, I recommend an oil with that, like a neem oil, um, to spray on top of the eggs, and that will smother those eggs to where they never hatch. So, it's getting into poinsettia season. Poinsettias are really well known for having white fly. White fly really likes them. And all the greenhouses are heated right now to keep those poinsettias looking good. It's been a good year growing poinsettias. And um, I have not, we've scouted, we've got, gosh, we probably have 200 poinsettias in the greenhouse right now. And I have not seen any white fly yet, but um, watching out for things like this, like I said, in our hospital area, we have this plant here that's got a lot of eggs on it. Those are going to hatch and they're going to find their way to those poinsettias if we don't take care of it. So that's why we do what we do and we try to get them controlled. Uh, but like I said, white flies generally not that bad of a pest inside your home. 
uh, much more of a greenhouse pest. But this is definitely one that you're going to buy with your plant if you're going to get white fly. So um, I just, just have to inspect. add, uh, <laughs> Kristen commented, half tinted to dip the aloe vera in bleach, set it on fire and then throw it into a volcano to kill her mealy bugs. <laughs> I know a lot of people have trouble with them. I told you the mealies are tough because they get in those crevices. They're annoying. Um, but the, the, the damage, it just takes a lot for the damage to get so bad to where the plant suffers so much. So, um, you know, clean them up. If you're really, if you, in, instead of doing all that, let's get you a systemic insecticide that's going to uh, bring that chemical up into the, the tissues of the plant. Whenever the mealy bugs feed on that, they will die after that. So let's, let's go that route instead of setting them on fire. <clears throat> but thank you for that. That was good. All right. So enough about white fly and their eggs. Let's move on to another really annoying one. And I know y'all are probably, if your houseplant growers have had trouble with scale. So let me get a, I got a, uh, there's one. I've got a palm here that has a little bit of scale on the stem. There he is. Hope y'all can see that. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's not great. The thing about scale is it doesn't look like much. It doesn't present to be an insect really it kind of just looks like a bump you can see this is what i'm talking about um really hard to kind of judge if you've got a scale problem or not if you don't know what you're looking for uh once again there's tons of different scale species out there you have some big ones there's some oyster scales that get on like say magnolia trees uh they can be huge they can be i mean really for an insect pretty large and then you can go all the way down to the small ones just like this and they just look like a raised bump on the leaf um, a lot of times it goes undetected that's the biggest problem with scale i think with with uh, home growers is that you don't know you have it and then numbers grow and they grow and they grow and your plant doesn't show all that much sign of of problems so you just let it go and then your numbers get so big that then you start seeing the issues and mainly what you see is right around where that adult scale is feeding it it typically gets to its spot and it doesn't move very much as an adult um, and it's going to stay there and what you're going to see is this yellow ring that's around the whole insect that's more or less it just sucking the juices out of the plant and when numbers get really, really high, this yellowing spreads through the whole leaf and then through multiple leaves. And then you have a whole plant that's got a lot of yellow on it and it just looks nasty. And then you realize you have a bug issue. And then by that point, it's a little bit late because those the, the tissue of that plant, unfortunately, once it goes yellow from an insect issue, is not going to turn back green again. So at that point, you almost have to just prune it out and wait for a reflush. So looking for scale is um, kind of crucial to know when you've got it. So this is another one, especially with scale, backsides of the leaves are crucial. They do not sit on the top part of the leaf very much at all. On succulents, they will, um, but generally they're going to be on the backsides of the leaves. So good practice to look at the backsides, not the top sides of the leaves. That's where you can find most of your insects. Um, another thing to note with scale is that it's easiest to to kill scale whenever they're in their uh, adolescent stages. So whenever the, we call them crawlers is what you call, that's when they're pretty mobile. They're very small, usually white, but not always. Like I said, there's a lot of species of them um, and they will be mobile up and down the stem. Uh, they'll go from the soil. I think they, they, they'll, you know, uh, hatch in the soil and then they'll crawl up the stems and you'll see little white, um, um, you crawlers is what we call them. And those are the ones that are the easiest to kill. Adult scale is a little bit tricky to kill. You can smother them, but they, a lot of scale have a hard shell. They're not a soft body. They can have their soft body scale and hard body scaled. Uh, some of the hard body ones are a little bit harder to get to using uh, synthetic insecticides usually is going to be a better method with scale than using organics. But if you find your mealybugs in the crawler stage, you can use organic soaps and oils to smother those insects and get rid of them. Uh, another big problem we have with scale is that we don't actually know if they're dead or not. You can spray a scale and it won't fall off. That's kind of the problem. They will cling, even if they're dead, they can cling to that stem. So a cleanup is always necessary with scale, like I said, because they don't, you don't know if they're dead or not. So um, after you do your spray, if you do decide to spray, you need to go to the backsides of those leaves and just wipe, physically wipe them off 
and get the scale off of the plant because like I said, they don't make it easy. They don't, you don't know if they're alive or dead. So scale's not a fun one. I don't like dealing with scale, uh, mainly because you don't know you have it until it's too late. But there's methods to use, you know, with I'm going to show you these products here soon, um, what to use to get rid of it. <clears throat> All right, enough about scale. What was the last one? Okay, yeah. All right, I don't actually, I don't believe I've actually got insects on this one. This one's a, let me see here. I wish I could get a, there we go. That's a little bit better. Not the greatest picture, but it's really hard to uh, see this one as well. So this is what I'm, I'm talking about, spider mite. This is a croton leaf that I have, which croton is, if you grow croton, you know, if you grow croton, you know, it's well known for um, having a lot of insect activity, mainly scale and mealybug, but it's not immune to spider mite. So spider mites, this is a good one for me to talk about um, when I was saying I see damage before I see bugs. Spider mites are very small. You can see them with the uh, with a good eye, but you got to have good eyesight. Most people can't see them. What a lot of people what it look what spider mites look like is um, take like a think about like a, a tick and then take the it, and then drop it way down in size, and that's it. Kind of like little little seed ticks. Um, that's about the size you get, and uh, their mo generally. Spider mites are not, and I couldn't find any spider mites because of the time of year it is. They like it hot and they like it dry. That's whenever levels can get high very quickly. So <clears throat> what you see though, is what I tried to kind of present here. That's not great, but it's a general uh, stipling is the word we generally use. And that means it's like this whitish uh, dotted kind of cast over the whole plant. And whenever levels get high enough with spider mite, you will see webbing you that's why the, the hence the name spider comes involved because they do have this webbing and it gets white and if really bad infestations if you've seen this before you know what i'm talking about you'll have a whole leaf that's just covered in what looks like a web um, and on top of that web what you see is little spider mites they look like little seed ticks crawling around all over top of the plant they can do a lot of damage they can do damage to outside plants and inside plants uh, but the weather kind of has to be warm enough for them to multiply. Um, so not a terrible one, but still it makes your leaves look unsightly. And once they do that, they go that whitish kind of cast look, they don't come back from that again. So you kind of have to just prune them off. Um, the, the use uh, when controlling spider mite, first things first is the use of water. Um, taking your plants outside getting your hose and getting a really hard stream of water is the recommended process by all horticulturists when it comes to taking care of spider mite. That's the first issue. You can blast those bugs away. That's the first process, just cleaning it up and getting the, you know, spraying off with water. Um, the other ones I've talked about, it, you know, they can, you can do the same thing. The use of water is a very good insecticide, just so y'all know, especially with aphids like we talked about and spider mite. You can spray them right off the plant. So I recommend you do that first um, and do not let your numbers get too high with spider mite because uh, they can make a plant look very bad. And then you have to just kind of cut and wait for a reflush. So um, if you, you know, after the water treatment, when, once you do that, if it's still not going away or you keep seeing it persisting, then the use of um, oils or soaps is um, generally what we're going to use for that. Their spider mites are fairly easy to kill. Uh, the problem with spider mites is just the numbers that can get so high so quickly. So keep an eye out for that. Look for this, uh, you know, look for the, what I'm showing on this leaf. I wish I could get you a better picture of that. But you can Google uh, spider mite damage or spider mite injury, and it'll show you some good pictures of, of what that's going to look like, and it's that whitish kind of look. So keep an eye out for that. Don't let the numbers get up, up so high to where you're seeing webbing. Once you see webbing, usually it's a little bit past, and then you got to take it out and spray it off really well. So uh, let me, that was the big five. Those are the five insect pests that you generally see the most inside your home. And now let me switch over to some of the uh, chemicals we use to control them. I'm going to start with the organics. Uh, real quick, we, I'm going to go ahead and interject a couple questions here sure. since we're talking about pests. All right. 
Um, one is uh, about ladybugs. Will ladybugs that uh, uh, nest in our homes during the winter eat any of the houseplant pests? No, not those. I don't. I think that's a different species of ladybug, and I think they mainly just come inside into a warm home mainly to reproduce, I believe is what they're doing. They're not going to be all that effective on taking care of your plants. Now, regular ladybugs outside um, or having them inside your home during the growing season, yes, a, um, ladybugs absolutely love aphids. That's one of their biggest food sources. So keeping ladybugs in the garden, keeping them, in, you know, we don't necessarily want ladybugs inside our house. I mean, it happens every winter. We all have to deal with that. But during the growing season, I don't know. It's just most people don't want to have extra bugs inside their house, even if they are beneficials. But if you want to, yeah, they will help take care of aphids. But um, yeah, don't ever... Uh, and when it comes to outside gardening, don't get rid of the ladybugs. They're they're good. And another one, um, any suggestions for the fungus gnat? Okay, so fungus, we get this question a lot. Fungus gnats are not really going to be a plant pest that causes any damage to your plants. Uh, they are aesthetically displeasing. I agree with that. Um, using neem oil or soaps like what I have here mm -hmm. is pretty effective against them. Um, just you know, using yellow sticky traps, we sell those um, and you can kind of put those, you can, you can put them on a little uh, like deal to stick inside the soil and you put it real close to soil level and they kind of are attracted to that yellow. They'll take care of a lot of those fungus gnats. Um, but if you're worried about the health of your plant, that's not an issue with fungus gnats. They really do not cause much damage. I used to grow uh, thousands of poinsettias every year where I used to work and um, we would get fungus gnats on our plants. We did not use any chemical treatment to get rid of them. Like I said, they're mainly just aesthetically displeasing. Now, a way to avoid fungus gnats altogether is to not keep your plants overwatered. Um, keeping moisture level at the very top of the soil all the time is going to promote more fungus gnats. So, for the most part with our plants, we're going to let them, you know, you're going to soak them whenever you, whenever they need dry. And then we're going to let that water come almost completely go away until we're ready to water again. And that will, that's how I water all of my house plants. And I have not hardly ever seen any fungus gnats inside my home. So keep the top layer a little bit more dry just because it's dry on top does not mean it's dry down below. You'd be amazed how much water can stay down below uh, beneath the soil level. So that'd be a good practice for, for keeping them away. All right, so back to our chemicals here. What do we have here? All right, this is neem oil. <clears throat> You've probably heard of this. Um, like I was saying earlier, there is no active chemical that, that poisons any bug at all. Uh, it literally just coats the, the bug and smothers it. So almost any garden center you go to should surely have neem oil. It is a good one to spray that is organic and safe and it won't hurt anything. Um, like I was talking to you earlier, though, we need to make good contact with the bug. You don't coat the bug really well. You don't get good results. So uh, backsides of leaves, make sure you hit the bug to kill the bug. And the other one is the same thing. This is just, um, it's called insect killing soap. It's literally just um, the active ingredient is potassium salts of fatty acids. Um, another one that it's safe to spray inside your home with all your pets and all that. Um, you got to make good contact with the bug to kill the bug. So those are the two organics that we sell here and they're pretty effective as long as you make contact. Just so, a general question for application method. Uh, okay. Does spraying have to be it or could you use a Q-tip or a brush um, to target those bugs one-to-one? -one? Yeah, most definitely anything you want to use. It, there's no perfect, I mean, there's no exact way to do this, y'all. It's a it's a, you know, it's a cleanup. So whatever you want to use, Q-tips are great. I know the girls in the garden center use Q-tips a lot here because you can really target that insect, uh, the individual. Um, and yeah, putting, you know, some of the soaps or oils on the end of that Q-tip and then rubbing them off is another good way to do it as well. So like I said, there's no perfect way to do it. Find your own way to do it and just, you know, take, take care of what you got. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Let's do this one first. This is called eight. This is permethrin. That is the active ingredient. And um, I want y'all to know too, look at the active ingredients when you, when you buy insecticides it has nothing to do with this, with this up here, what, you know, the, the marketing that they try to use, look at the active ingredient, and then you can look that up and see what you got, how stout it actually is. Um, like I said, this one is permethrin. Permethrin is a synthetic 
form of pyrethrins. Now, pyrethrins are naturally occurring in plants. I believe uh, um, <clears throat> there's a, what is it, a daisy that that pyrethrins come from. It was it was found, I mean, years ago, hundreds, thousands of years ago, py pyrethrins were used. Nowadays, we in a lab can create a synthetic form of that that is a little bit more effective. So whenever you're looking at the product label, see pyrethrins end in IN, and this is permethrin, it ends in IN. If you, there's a, probably four or five different other chemicals that end in that IN, those are other synthetic uh, chemicals. All they do is, you know, the, the molecule, they can split a little arm this way and it changes it, but it's still very effective for killing bugs. This one here claims to kill over a hundred named insect pests. We're only talking about five here. So there's tons of insects out there, but this will kill anything from worms, Japanese beetles, definitely aphids, scale, pretty much all of it. This works for up to four weeks. So if you make good coverage on all the, you know, the, the plant tissue, it's going to be absorbed a little bit into that leaf and it's going to kill these insects as they feed on the plant. So this is a synthetic, <clears throat> um, not organic, obviously, but very effective if those numbers are starting to get too high that you can't control it organically or you can't do it with your hands or with water, then we need to go to this route. This is a pretty good product though. It works really well. And then we move on to the big boy. This is a systemic insect control. So this has asaphate in it. That is the active ingredient. What I mean when I say send systemic insect control is that this is able to be taken into the plant and up into the tissues of the plant and absorbed by that and then released and kills the insect as they feed on it. So this can last for a pretty long time. Um, do know that asaphate smells very bad. Um, so some that's another thing to think about when you're spraying plants inside your home is that this can leave a pretty nasty smell. So if you were going to use this, you would want to take it outside to spray it, let it kind of get rid of that smell, and then you can bring it back inside your home. But out of all the products that we've talked about so far, this is the most stout. It's going to take care of pretty much anything you got. Um, there is another systemic insecticide that um, I didn't bring in today. We're actually going to no longer sell it. It is a what they call a neonicotinoid um, insecticide. Those are the nasty ones. That's the ones that kill bees. And that's another thing I need to talk to you about if you're going to be spraying these things for outside plants. Anything that's a flowering plant or going to be flowering soon, these products right here are going to kill those bees almost immediately. We want to try to avoid that if we can. We don't need to be killing bees. The less bees you have in your garden, the less food you're going to have um, if you're trying to grow veggies. Not all that important on inside plants because we don't generally have bees inside our home. And a lot of the, you know, house plants don't flower as much as ones outside. But do know, these will kill bees for sure. So be careful when you're spraying. Try not to spray anything that, that's in flower. Um, the bad one I was telling you about is called imidacloprid. This, I believe, has been banned already in the UK, and I don't think that the US is all that far behind. Very nasty chemical. It's a systemic insecticide that kills almost, well, not almost, it kills everything, uh, bees included. So, you know, just be responsible. If you're spraying leafy house plants that don't have blooms, then you can go stout and you can just get rid of that stuff. Um, but, you know, outside type plants, let's, let's be careful with those systemic insecticides. Okay. Uh, we have a question. What's the second synthetic insecticide called? Uh, the, the second one I talked about yeah. is called acephate, A-C-E-P-H-A-T-E, -E, acephate. And there's a few different um, companies that make, that, that have acephate. And I think orthene um, is one that's, that's commonly used. That's more used for uh, people like us, growers or nurserymen. Um, a little bit harder to find at like a normal um, garden center, but you can. And uh, like I said, this is a this is a stinky one. So just be careful if you're spraying this inside your home. So that's all I've got. Um, I guess we can go over some questions if we have any. What we got over there, Tyler? Uh, yeah, just type your question in the chat. Uh, we'll stick around for a minute or two. Um, once uh, we've run out of questions, we'll go ahead and end it. So. We hope we've covered all of your house houseplant pest issues. Uh, you know, there's some persnickety ones out there that, uh, let's see. 
Get those aphids back up there. With my aloe vera, I've sprayed neem oil weekly for two months, stuck it in a closet for two weeks, washed it down with water, and somehow mealy gut bugs keep returning. What should I do? <laughs> if you've done that much, maybe let's just, since aloe is not a flowering plant, let's maybe just go ahead and get you some, some systemic to get down in that soil. Because sometimes those eggs from those mealies are going to be down in the soil area and you're not making contact with the neem oil at all. Like I said, if you're just spraying leaves with neem oil, you're doing nothing. You've got to actually hit that bug to kill it. Um, and then whenever you see a mealy bug, take your finger and rub that thing off and just kill it. Um, that's the first thing. But then if you are having eggs and trouble with it that much and it keeps returning, then I'd say it's going to be an, a soil issue. So let's go ahead and get you uh, something synthetic to get down in the soil, let the plant take it up, and then hopefully we'll get rid of your mealybug issue. Now, if uh, this is just hypothetical, but sure. if, if you know, the aloe vera was used for, say, cuts and burns and stuff like that, would that systemic affect that at all? It should not that I know of. I don't believe that would affect us at all. If that's what you mean. That's what I meant. Yeah, no, I, not that I know. I've never read that before. Um, so, you know, with thing, you know, what's funny is with things like permethrin, uh, it's, this is a common chemical for, um, pharmacists to treat people with bad bed bug issues. I know this because my mm. best friend is a pharmacist and we got to talking one day about chemicals and I talked to him about permethrin and he asked me, what do you know? Well, you know, why do you know permethrin? And I said, well, that's a common insecticide that we use. And he said, well, that's funny because I prescribe it to my patients that have bed bug issues. And he said, I, you, the way you apply that is you literally lather it all over your body. So that's permethrin at a small percentage. Permethrin does nothing to us, but it is a very common insecticide. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the, the aloe vera question had a follow up. I've also sprayed the plant down with hydrogen peroxide, rubbed it down with isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> and let's just piggyback this other question here. Um, are rubbing alcohol or hydrogen peroxide an option for treating with a Q-tip? Um, yes, I know of people that do that. I want to know how your plant looks, man. You've put it through some some stuff. It, it, does the Can you write back to me? How, how's the plant look, the general health of the plant? Because like I was talking about earlier, if numbers aren't getting crazy high and your plant looks good, then that's just kind of nature. Uh, you know, outdoor plants all over uh, have some sort of insect activity on them. You talk about a big 50 foot tree. Gosh, I couldn't even tell you how many insects are on that tree, but to the naked eye, the tree looks fine. So if your aloe looks good and you're just seeing a few bugs here and there, uh, you know, then maybe that's just kind of, you know, something that plant growers have to kind of deal with. So I don't know if, if your plant looks good, I'd say you're, you're doing all right. No need to freak out. Um, and just let that thing kind of grow and take care of the adults as you see them. Uh, let's see. Just, just a curious question for you. Uh, what background or education do you have and how did you learn all this great stuff? I've got a Bachelor of Science degree in plant and soil science. Um, I'm a horticulturist, technically. I've been in the field now for over a decade. Um, since I started dealing with plants in college, I've never looked back. It's a bug that I've that I've caught, and uh, it's an addiction for me now. I just want to know as much as I can. Uh, I started kind of my horticulture career at uh, MTSU. I was the kind of manager of the organic vegetable um, farm that we had there. So what we would do is grow vegetables and harvest them on Fridays and bring them into campus to sell them at our organic farmer's market. That was kind of my first love. And uh, I got to see a lot of different pests in that world. Uh, pests love veggies for sure. Um, so I had to deal with that and we were organic. So I had to use methods that, you know, uh, that weren't systemic, or, you know, or synthetic to keep the bugs off the plants. So that's where I learned a lot. And then from there, I got into the uh, retail um, garden center world, which I love. I love talking to people. I love talking to people about plants. And uh, I did that for four or five years where I was a, a grower as well. Like I mentioned, I grew uh, poinsettias. We grew a whole bunch of perennials every year. Uh, and that's where I got to, uh, you know, familiar with, with the growing side of it. Um, and in that world, we did have to use much more synthetic, um, you know, sprays to get rid of our insect pests that we would have, because when you're talking about thousands of plants in the same greenhouse, um, infestations can go quickly. So the scouting that I had to do on that was pretty intense, looking for damage and then looking for bugs and controlling them before it got out of hand. Um, 
And then after that, I moved back home. I'm from Cheatham County here. I've lived here for pretty much my whole life, except when I was in college. And I found my way to Bates and I haven't looked back since. I've been at Bates now for four years and uh, I love it. <clears throat> so that's my background. Yes, he's very well qualified. Also very helpful for uh, selecting species that have multiple traits that are favorable to our climate. Um, he's, he's a huge uh, source of knowledge and uh, also inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, also, all of this equipment that you see here, the the microscope and stuff, we we keep that out in our garden center uh basically for you so you can bring in something if you got questions about it if you got damage bring it into us have austin or somebody put it under the microscope and we'll figure out what it is and and match a treatment solution uh to you and i just i put it in the chat but info at batesnursery.com if you ever want to send something in a photo of something that looks strange kind of funny um also you know austin's return calls before for people who have plant questions all the time all the time yeah i look at pictures all the time we do have a lot of pictures that come through uh outdoor plants indoor plants from the smallest seed to the tallest tree i like to talk about it so yeah any anytime you have pictures or concerns send them over that goes to miss paula in the office and then she'll call me up uh, to come take a look at it and i will either email you back or i will give you a phone call if i need more information which usually i do <laughs> there's that when sending pictures I, it's good to note um you know getting a picture of a close-up but also of the big picture helps me out greatly you know it's not just one picture that i can i've got to i've got to ask multiple questions so multiple pictures when sending those in greatly helps me out in either identifying what you've got or figuring out what you need to do next yeah and like we mentioned you know underside of leaves is a big important one very big yep that's um, the one people i think mess up the most yeah it's that it's those backsides and those crevices is where those bugs are going to hang out yep uh Okay, well, it looks like uh, we're all good on questions and we're right on time for ending. So, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. We appreciate you watching this. Um, hope we can keep it going and hope you uh, figure out your pest issues. Thank you. <laughs>